Right, so I'm basically recording, and the purpose of this video is because I want to talk about something and somebody that I basically like. Because I have done a few blogs in the past, and I've talked about reviewing CDs and various bits and pieces, and I thought, well, I could do basically, um, I'm not saying whether this will be the last blog that I do on this particular subject, but it will certainly be um, one of the last blogs that I do where I talk about everything connected to it because basically I want to um, address, not the elephant in the room, but I want to address basically um, something so I thought this will be the perfect time to basically put this blog out and that and basically it's to do with Shaking Stevens. Now I'm not going to do many more blogs in the future that is all about how I got into him and all that bits and pieces because I don't think I need to do that. Maybe in about 10 years time I might do an updated version but I don't think that will be important as um, if you see this video this will be basically it and the point of the um, video is basically to say well how long have I have I been a fan? When did it all start and all that um, malarkey? Well basically um, people who don't know me they might not know what my age is. I'm 37 now um, they're probably thinking, hmm, yeah. So, I was about two or three when I first got into Shaky Stevens. So, this would be the early 80s. I was born in 1980. So, I can't exactly say how and when because I don't remember that bit. All I remember was that, um, I believe that I had some records that was given to me and basically, um, Somebody had got me into um, basically Shaggy Stevens and um, what it was, I had decided that um, after listening to one or two songs that he basically released, I was hooked basically. So as I grow, as I grew up, I was a massive fan of Shaggy Stevens and I would buy the singles when they came out. Now, I'm not proclaiming I've got every single single that he's ever released because I think there might be a few gaps in there. I know um I think I've got everyone that he's released like the, the normal versions of singles that he's released like from when he first charted all the way up until current um singles at the moment that he's basically released. On C D and record that I know of, not necessarily promos but normal versions I do um have I, I, I think. Sometimes I don't have them on specific formats like um, for instance I've got Love Attack on vinyl single but I've also got the cassette tape and then I've also got the CD single which I'm showing you here basically which is wonderful because it's got the extended version on there and as long as I have you which is live but um and it's a lovely CD inside it as you may well be able to see there but um I did basically used to buy shaky albums and singles as it went along. So I have predominantly most of them. There probably is the odd gap or two where I don't have a specific, a specific release on a specific format. So um, I might only have the CD single to one of these singles that came out in the early 90s and don't have anything else. But basically, I got into Shaky Stevens basically. Um, and as I was growing up, basically, um, I was a big, big fan. And I still am. I used to dress like him. Now, this is kind of, um, I'm not saying it's getting a bit, well, it might be crazy to some people because they might think, you know, why would you do that? But I suppose when you're, when you're into somebody, you want to be like them. You want to dress like them. So basically, I basically, um, used to wear a denim jacket that had shaky patches on it and he had some badges on there and then I basically um, would wear um, a t-shirt and had shaky Stevens on it and I had some white boots and that so basically I was I, I, I basically sometimes used to you know dress like shaky Stevens and you know I would be um, listening to his music and um, Basically, every time he was on television, I had to watch him. You know, there was no question that every time I see him, it was Shaker Stevens, that was my hero growing up. 
and I would uh, buy the stuff that he basically released. Um, as I got older, I started to wane off a little bit. I got into secondary school and um, basically, I, I, I still like Shaky Stevens, but I wasn't necessarily somebody who come out and said to everybody, oh, I'm a Shaky Stevens man. I didn't necessarily have to admit that. I didn't really admit much of it because... Some people didn't really ask, and they didn't have to know. So, it wasn't always a case of, oh, he's a Shaking Stevens fan. I didn't really get into that bit, and didn't say that I was a massive, massive Shaking Stevens fan at the time, because I didn't need to, basically. I could keep that aside, but my cousin was a Shaking Stevens fan as well at the time, um, basically growing up, so he liked Shaking Stevens as well, and... My first time I ever saw him live was in 1989 on the um, tour that he did. Um, I think it was a whole lot of shaky tour. But I remember him playing Leicester. And my mum and dad basically took me to see him and I went with my aunt and my cousin. And that was the first time I ever saw Shaky Stevens live. I don't know much about the, the gig whatsoever. I, I was only about eight or nine then. So I don't know... A lot about what it was like, but all I remember was that basically it was a lovely time, and um, Love Attack was basically the single that was being released at the time, which I do own on CD single, as I've said. And I did actually um, buy a program. I got a program, so I've got that in my souvenir, basically, um, and that. And then it all sort of changed a little bit in 1991. Chuck Fest in Peterborough, because that's where I'm basically from. I live in Peterborough, I'm from there. Was having um, some celebrity guests at Chuck Fest. One of them being, yes, you've guessed it, Shaking Stevens. And basically he had um, come... So I waited in the queue with my cousin and my mum and my dad and basically um, I got a picture taken with him. I got my autograph on one of his records. I think it was Yes I Do single that was released at the time. So I managed to get that signed and um, a picture with him. And he loved my jacket. He said he loved my jacket, you know, and which I had at the time and I still wore it fairly um, for a while. Um, but... Yeah, that was a great time. I was very happy, excited about that. And by the time we got to the mid nineties, I didn't wear my jacket as much as I used to sometimes wear it a little bit in the early noughties and probably. But then I didn't really wear it as much as I um, did back in the eighties and early nineties. I stopped wearing it basically. Um, it got a bit worn, and then I got a new denim jacket. And when I got that one, I did transfer some of my patches onto it and I started wearing that a little bit but then I just sort of said look I'm not going to wear a denim jacket anymore well I'm going to wear one but not with shaky Stephen patches on it um so I thought well I don't need to worry about that I can keep my old jacket I can keep my patches on it and, and all that and basically as I got older I started to think seriously about the collecting side of shaky Stephen because as I grew up, I didn't buy everything on all the formats, so I wasn't one of these that was such a fan that I had to go out and buy every single format, but now I sort of buy what I can. I don't proclaim that I am somebody who goes and buys every single um, record that I see of Shakespeare that I don't own, because I don't have the money for that, you know. I mean, if I could, if I could spend money only on Shakespeare's records, I would. I'll be able to go out and buy stuff that I don't own, but it's not possible because basically um, I wouldn't be able to buy anything else and other music would have to come basically out of um, this thing. So it would be a basic um, thing to, to basically say that if I only bought Shakespeare's Stevens records, then all my other records and CDs that I'd have to collect would have to fall away at the hurdle and and that so I thought well it's a better idea for me not to um 
just collect Shaggy Stevens records. So what I do basically is I collect um I collect bits and pieces, you know, and I still have a a fair a fair sized collection of albums and CDs and things like that, you know, some bootlegs and things like that, which I don't condone that we should all have, but sometimes you have to have them because Shaky Stevens hasn't released any live CDs, but so I would say that um I've I've enjoyed my roller coaster ride. I've always enjoyed Shaky Stevens. I'm not afraid to admit I like Shaky Stevens now, as I used to probably back in the nineties sometime when I wouldn't always say, but now I'm just saying, look, I like Shaky Stevens. There's nothing you can you can do about it. He my hero. I'm gonna stick with that, and I have been fortunate enough to see Shaker Stevens live for a second time. It took me a long time because I know a lot of fans might say, how come it took you 20 or whatever years before you go and see Shaker Stevens again? Why did it took you all that time? Because it's just basically that I haven't got round to it and not always have the money to go to these concerts. And eventually, me and my mum and my dad and my cousin, we all decided to go and see Shaker Stevens this year when he did um, Birmingham, which was my second time of seeing him alive. And you would already know all about that because I've already done the um, video for that, the review of the gig and things like that. So I don't need to really say much about it over here. So all I can say is basically that um, this is just more or less to, to, to um, say about when it started. Growing up, collecting, seeing them live, you know, um, I feel, I feel like now, the one thing that, um, uh, I'm, I'm in two minds about Shane's demon, really, because part of me thinks, well, sometimes he's a bit protective and, and all this, and he does things that maybe I don't agree with and that, but then part of me thinks, well, um, he's still a great guy, he's still a great singer and artist and, and that, and you know, no one's ever perfect, but I suppose that's just the way I feel, you know, I don't know what to make of him, I mean, I don't want to sit here and say that Shaggy is a total arsehole and all that, because they'll say you're not really a fan, but we are allowed to criticise him sometimes, because being a fan of any artist, you know, they do make their mistakes and they do have sometimes bad things that, that they do. Um, the new album that he released this year isn't exactly the greatest album he's ever done, but it was still good though. And I applaud him for doing something that he wants to do and move along in the times and and that. And the thing I'm going to end off with is that um, I'm sadly not in the fan club. I know that's going to come to a shock to a lot of um, fans. Might think where they might think, why not? Well, I don't know. I've never really been in the fan club, so I can't really explain why. I suppose back then I didn't really have funds and money to stay in the fan club. I didn't really do that. I just haven't really got round to um, joining the fan club at any time soon. So I suppose um, I haven't really thought about it, why I'm in it. But I can't explain why anyway. All, all I can say is that I'm, I'm a fan just like anybody else, so... Whether I'm in the fan club or not, I'm still a fan and I just wanted to um, clear that up and basically just talk about the fact that when I, how I, you know, when did I start Nike Shakes Demon and how long you've been going on. Um, but I think I'm going to leave it there because I don't want this video to go on too long, ramble on too long about um, Shakey Demon. But anyway, bye for now.